Hey you guys, welcome to My Table 3. My name is Carrie. if you're new here, and today I'm excited to share with you a quick and easy side dish that I have found on the internet. It is a sweet potato casserole made in the crock pot, right? So I thought it'd be good and fun to show you ways how to save oven space on Thanksgiving because we all know how precious that oven space or real estate is, right? Your turkey, your stuffing, pies, anything that you haven't made ahead or that you need to reheat, it's gonna go in the oven, right? Well, I have one oven. I'm not lucky enough to have two, so I'm always looking for ways to use the crock pot to get my sides in. I do have a, a green bean casserole kind of recipe that we'll talk about later in the video that is also crock pot, but today I'm going to use a recipe that I found online for a sweet potato casserole using some of my canned, home canned sweet potatoes. That recipe is going to be in the link, but I'm not going to ramble on. I know you're here for the recipe, not me talking, so let's jump in and get stuff mixed up for the crock pot. Okay, let's look at what all we're gonna use for this casserole. I have my spray that I sprayed my crock pot with. I have my home canned um, sweet potatoes. I can those. And of course I use my four jar lids. If you're interested in those lids, I have plenty of videos that show you um, how I've used those. I've used them for a year now. You can get 10% off using this code here on the screen if you order. But, so you need sweet potatoes. You can use canned from the store. You can also boil five to six sweet potatoes until they're tender or roast them to use those in this recipe as well. I'm gonna measure these in a bowl in a moment to show you how many cups I use. Then for the sweet potato part, we're gonna use milk. Um, and I got vanilla, so you need milk and vanilla. The recipe link is in the description. Milk and vanilla, two eggs that we're gonna beat, and then um, some brown sugar and some regular sugar. I'm using brown sugar alternative which this is the one I got from Amazon and try it. I like it, okay? The only thing I don't like about this is it clumps pretty bad. Let me show you what one of the big clumps looks like. So I don't like that part, but it has a really good taste to be sugar-free. And for the white sugar, I'm replacing it with um, some super sweet, and I'll make notes below in that as well. And then some salt and some cinnamon. And then for the topping, we have that same brown sugar alternative, some pecans, two tablespoons of flour, and that's it. That simple, now let's get to mixing. All right, guys, so we are gonna get to mixing, and I did leave out in the ingredients butter. This is a half a stick of butter. I'm gonna use some for the filling and some for the topping. I opened my two jars and drained them, and this is about four cups of sweet potatoes. Um, you can, like I said, you can um, use Fresh sweet potatoes, you can bake them or you can um, boil them to get those right. Oh. What we're gonna add next is going to be our two beaten eggs. We're going to use a couple of tablespoons of this melted butter, which is the one eighth tablespoon, one eighth of a cup, which is two tablespoons. The rest I'm going to reserve for the topping. Then we are going to add our sweeteners. You can use regular brown sugar and white sugar. I'm just using alternatives. All those notes and link to the recipe would be below. Let's see. I'm going to add my milk and vanilla. Let me get something here. Next comes the spices. I'm going to use, which I probably didn't mention the spices, but I'm using a dash of salt. Which, well, I'm gonna take that back. A teaspoon of salt. A teaspoon of cinnamon. Actually, I'm gonna put two in mine, but the recipe calls for one. And I'm just eyeballing it, you can measure. I also like to put ginger in, your, in mine, but you don't have to put this in yours. We just like the little zip from it and the flavor with the sweet potatoes. And put about a half a teaspoon of that. And that is it. So let's mash that up. I'm just going to use my mix and chop. You can definitely whiz this up in a blender or a food processor. My sweet potatoes are very soft and because I can them. And of course, if you use canned sweet potatoes from the store, they're going to be soft too. And if you want yours very pureed, you know, like extremely smooth and all that, you may want to whiz it through a food processor. I'm not dragging that thing out today because it hates me. The lid does anyway. And I don't care if we have a little bit of lumps in ours. I like a little bit of texture, which is fine. But you can 
see what I have here. Just want to make sure I get all the eggs mixed in. And I am mashing these with the end of my spoon. This is going to cook in the crock pot for three hours. You want to make sure you get the eggs done, right? You want it to thicken up and set like a casserole. And you want to make sure the eggs are done. And that's it. You guys, this is a great way to free up your oven for your dressing or your turkey. You know how on Thanksgiving there's so many different things that take up your oven. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. You guys, I sprayed this with some olive oil cooking spray. You can use coconut oil, any kind of spray you'd like. And I'm just going to pour the sweet potato mixture in. And this may be something that you need to double or triple for your family. Um, if you've got a bigger crock pot, there's just three of us. And I don't want to be eating this <laughs> for five or six days. So we're just doing this batch here. In the sink. And I'm just going to... You can see there. Alright. Guys, if y'all hear that noise... This is the dogs in the background. <clears throat> we are actually um, watching uh, my husband's uncle's dog, and he is, she, Cinnamon, <laughs> uh, likes to be my shadow, so she's sitting right down here on the floor. But let's mix our topping up. We're going to do the brown sugar. Remember, I'm using the Splenda brown sugar, which is a low-carb sugar alternative obviously the sweet potatoes aren't low carb but this is sugar free for us you can use regular brown sugar just follow the measurements two tablespoons of flour i'm going to do a dash of salt which i believe leaning over at midnight farmhouse says that a dash is 1 16th i think of a teaspoon i'll put it on the screen if it's different and then this is chopped pecans and this bowl is too small but you know, what would it be like if I actually thought ahead and got a big enough bowl, huh? <laughs> All right, so I'm mixing this together just a little bit. You know what? I'm going to switch to this bowl that had the sweet potatoes in it. I don't think it's going to matter. It's a dream. I don't mind, but you guys can see you need a bigger bowl. So I'm going to put that in there because I still got to add the butter. Okay, I'm gonna add the butter. And now we're gonna mix this up like a crumbled topping. All right. Now, the one thing about this in the crock pot is you know how when you bake a sweet potato casserole in the oven, you get a really crusty, crunchy topping? Well, obviously you're not gonna get as much of a crunch with a crock pot, but you can take the lid off the last, um, I'd say the last 30 minutes of cooking and it will help crisp this up a little bit. So I'm going to rearrange the camera so you can see me put this on and I will be right. So there is the topping. I also did go ahead and add a half a teaspoon of cinnamon to that and a sprinkle of ginger. Um, and there we have it. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of sprinkle this over the top. Now, if you like a lot of the topping, you can double this recipe on the top. But I, I like the sweet potato casserole, but sometimes to me, it gets so sweet that I can actually eat it as a dessert. I don't want it to be exactly that sweet today. Okay, so let me see if I can get out of the light. And you just kind of put that all over the top. How's that? Let's see if I can let you see that better. All right, so this is gonna go now, put the lid on it. And I'm gonna put this crock pot on high and let it go for three hours. All right guys, so it's been three hours. I was gonna check it at two and a half hours, but the time got away from me. Um, but it has been three hours and look at that. Oh, told you back, look at that, it smells. Oh, it smells so good in here. So I'm gonna let it cook now for 30 minutes without the top because I learned from an apple crisp recipe um, that I did in uh, my crock pot. If you leave the top off for a while, it would kind of crisp up. Now remember, it's not going to be as crunchy as you would if you had done it under the oven under direct heat because, you know, this is a crock pot. But we're going to let this cook for another 30 minutes and then I'm going to come back and dish it up and give you a taste test. 
Okay, so it has now cooked for 30 minutes with the lid off. Um, and I scooped some out here, you can see. And I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. I'm gonna try not to burn my mouth off, but I can already tell you a couple of things I would change. This is not my recipe, it's one I found off online. I'm gonna link it below so you can check it and follow along with that as well. Um, I will notice, I mean, let me show you. Well, I won't show you, I'll tell you. So one thing I noticed, and I know it's where it comes from, but the, there is a little bit of liquid or watery liquid in the bottom of my crock pot, um, which I don't like. Nobody probably would like, but I know that it come from my canned sweet potatoes. If you canned sweet potatoes before, you or any kind of potato, you know that they do get kind of watery and mushy. Um, to combat that liquid, I probably would not add uh, as much milk. I would probably cut mine down if I was using the canned sweet potatoes. Now, the canned sweet potatoes in the cans at the store, they don't seem quite as watery to me, but they may be a little bit watery. So I definitely recommend smashing, you know, boiling and smashing your sweet potatoes or roasting your potatoes ahead of time. You can do that a day or two ahead and have those ready for this. That's definitely what I would do. Now, um, it smells amazing. I will tell you that the crumb topping, it did not get crispy. Um, so if you wanna add a little more pecans on the top to make it crunchy, to have a little bit more texture, you can totally do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and taste this really quick and try not to burn my mouth off. Mm. As far as overall taste, it's delicious. Definitely will make a good meal for us today to snack on um, throughout the day for lunch and supper. But I would definitely roast my sweet potatoes or boil them on the counter next time instead of using my canned sweet potatoes. But this is something I could use those up with. So overall, not a bad recipe. I love that you can do it in the crock pot. And it has a really good flavor, even if we made it sugar-free. So I'm thankful for that. Now, if you are a fan of crock pot sides for Thanksgiving, I also have a Parmesan green, Parmesan bacon green bean. It is a lower carb, so it would work for anybody that's low carb or keto in your family, but nobody's gonna know that it's low carb or keto. Sorry. But it is basically a green bean casserole in the crock pot, and it is delicious. I would probably do that green bean casserole in the crock pot and do um, this in the oven if I had to choose, you know? But if you have two crock pots, either one of them would work well. But the green bean casserole is a great healthy alter alternative um, to the traditional ones that has the canned soup and onions on top because mine does not have that. So I'll link those green bean casserole crock pot recipe below. It's called Parmesan bacon green beans. It is really good. It's a hit on the blog and a lot of low carbers like it. But like I said, even if people aren't low carb, they're not gonna know it's low carb keto. It just tastes amazing. So that's it for our Thanksgiving side today. I hope you enjoyed the quick, easy recipe that you could do in your crock pot to save the oven space. Um, coming up in a couple weeks on Thanksgiving. Thank you guys always for watching my videos, for being so encouraging in the comments. Please give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel in the videos. And if you're new, I hope you like the content that you watched today, and I hope you uh, subscribe and stick around. But until the next video, guys, I'll see you later.